all these custom node groups because that's what we're going to be looking at now i'm also going to break up this tutorial into three parts so after i make this I can, i'm going to segment it in two different videos so that anyone who wants to uh, watch different parts uh, is easier so i'm just going to make part one as a, uh what was it planning textures yeah and then part two adding that and then part three which is what we're going to be lo looking at uh it's going to be about making custom node groups so let's get into it so what are custom node groups so this is like creating a shader something like a, a principal shader you see here instead of having all these maps for example if you want to tweak this you have to know where it's connected and what is where it's connected from and what is uh, affecting and, uh, instead of having that, that that many nodes you just have one node group like this and you only have sliders to work with so let's set that up and see how we can get it to work so uh, the things I want to change in this is uh, I want to be able to just switch out the texture and uh, make everything just look nice like that so you can see and uh, yeah, this is a bit too tiling uh, so I just reduce this and then we have a new surface so I only want uh, to be able to change this and uh, to, I want to use this for material to for different uh, materials actually let me duplicate this a few times just to show you what I mean so we're going to create one custom node group uh, but uh, be able to just switch out uh, one texture to use for all the other materials so I'm just going to move this so all the texture maps <coughs> that I want uh, to have control over I'm just going to put them on the far left and uh, everything else that I just want to use a slider for I'm just going to have them here so let's do that so to create a custom node group I'm just going to grab all the nodes between here and here just leave out the principal BSDF and uh, control G and that will create a new custom node group uh, this node group is going to have inputs and outputs and right now we only have one input uh, which is our texture and one output I don't like how these uh, uh, getting entangled or tangled between uh, kind of creating this wave like structure so what I'm going to do is uh, if you select the node group and hit tab to go into edit mode you see the interface here uh, including your inputs and outputs and uh, you can uh, move reposition how these are positions by just selecting the node group so for example the normal map is up here and it's what's causing that web entanglement uh, so I'm just going to click this to move it down so that only have so that they are aligned uh, as nicely but so right now the inputs have generic na names you can see color color and, and we don't really know what input is what so what I'm going to do is tab into edit mode so that I can access uh, this interface and now I know color is supposed to be our base color so I'll just rename it base color then I have roughness roughness and then I have normal and uh, that's good uh, now we have the input I'll change that to texture input but uh, if we wanted to control how rough the surface is actually let me just duplicate this material so that we can just going to click this so that this is a duplicate material now I can just uh, select this and switch out this texture to have wood they're all going to still use uh, the same material we have set out uh, the same node group we have set so let me just this is going to be using that wood and uh, this should use and watch I'm not, I don't think that looks nice let's find a metal surface yeah this okay it's supposed to look like metal uh, rusted metal but uh, it looks like marble instead 
uh, which I'm okay with. Uh, anyway, so yeah, you can see what we have. So I want to, to vary the roughness of these uh, materials, but uh, I don't really have control for of that here. Actually, let me just expand this as well. I'm not using that. I don't have uh, the control for that. So what I can do is uh, tab into edit mode, and I know that uh, I can control the roughness of these surfaces. Uh, so this node group is being is being shared by all these materials, different materials we have created. Uh, just call this concrete, concrete, uh, wood, and whatever the other is, metal. I just call this metal. So I don't really have control over the roughness, but uh, I know that if I tab into edit mode for this node group. I know that uh, this is, uh, uh, let me see, yeah, this here, yeah, this controls uh, the roughness, you can see. So, and I don't want to be tabbing in out and out of uh, the node group to control that. So I can just grab that input here. Let me first expand this. This is the input, drag it out to the input uh, node group, a uh, node here. Uh, there is a dot there. So if you drag this to that dot, you just create a new group. And uh, before we forget what that is for, I can just go to tab into uh, the interface to rename this to roughness control. Uh, control. But uh, see now if we if we play with this you can see it's affecting at uh, the roughness of only this material are uh, because though these are using the same sharing the same node group uh, the settings can be different so I can control I can give this a separate roughness uh, from this but remember this roughness we broke it up so that we have a roughness for uh, for the material for the surface and a roughness for for the dirt and uh, we created this dirt material uh, let me see if I can find that uh, where is our dirt yeah I think this is our dirt this is our dirt surface uh, it has a dirt color and uh, also has a dart roughness okay this is the dart uh, this is uh, the dart control let me first preview the output if i change uh, the dart color okay i'm looking at a different i'm looking at the surface instead of the surface so let me tab into edit mode if I change the color here, you can see I'm changing the color of the dart. Uh, actually, I'm changing the roughness of the dart. Here, this controls the color of the dart. Let me just make it something crazy so that I can easily identify it. So, uh, but I don't want to be tabbing in, so I'm just going to get the color and feed it into uh, the output node. I rename that to dart color. But we also want to have control over the dart roughness. And uh, we have this input here. And uh, for that, this is what controls uh, the dart roughness can see how that is affecting it now instead of using the color input what I'm going to do is that uh, we're already in uh, the node group I'm just going to add a new value here I don't want it to be color actually so I'm just going to let's see uh, you can just drag directly from the node group uh, to the input I think that's also going to give me a color value which is not what I want I don't want to 
because it's going to be very confusing. I just want a roughness value like this. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Tab into edit mode. So this is our color. Yeah, here. You can just add a convert math node to connect that there and this here. And that should give me I think it's still giving us a color. So let me first reduce, remove this color input. Uh, so that I just bring this directly into the add. Now I can, you can see we have a value now. Call this that roughness. Okay. Now I have control over the color of the dart. Let me select this so that I'm working on this. I have control over the color of the dart and uh, the roughness value of the dart. What I don't have control over is the amount of dart on the surface. So I know that uh, that is controlled by this value here. You can see, you can reduce the amount, you can increase that. So I'm also just going to have that as an input. And that you can add as many uh, inputs as you want, depending on what you're going for. So I'll call this dot amount. Now with just with just one input like this, you can create a variation of different surfaces. can make it look super rough and dirty or make it okay make sure that uh, you okay right now the values are going into the neg negative which is affecting how the overall look is looking so but uh, we can tap into edit mode and uh, <clears throat> give this a minimum and a maximum value so the minimum should be zero and the maximum should be one uh, same for the actually the maximum for this I'm not sure I can go around to 100 but uh, the minimum should be zero <coughs> okay, you know what let's test this out and see let's not just guess so <coughs> so this is the dart amount if you go to 10 it disappears if we go to zero it becomes that that just takes over so yeah the minimum should be around 10 or 15 and then the maximum should be let's do 15 and the minimum should be zero uh the default you can set the default value I don't need. Uh, the roughness should always be one to zero and uh, yeah i think that's it for the most part so i can't go over uh, value of zero and 15 for the dot which is nice so I want some dot. Yeah, so I can also duplicate this just to show you how easy this is to work with and how efficient this is. So I now have a new surface. I'll just make sure that I'm using a different material. So I'll just duplicate this. And now I can give it a new texture for it. So let's try something else. Let's try different surface different so let's go with this it's really rough so let's make it a bit reflective give it some dot change the dot color and we have a new surface now what we haven't added remember these hard old hard uh, normal maps or bump maps so we need to be able to control the strength of that so I'm just going to also add that so I'm just going to drag this into there so add in the normal strength no more strength no more strength no more 
I'm just calling it pump strength. By the way, this note group is going to be available to my Patreon. So if you want to want to get it, so you can find it there. I can see. Um, the great thing about this is that uh, I'm working on this material, but uh, because it's sharing the same note group with all the other materials, those note groups has, have also been updated to add uh, the normal strength. I'm selecting this give it that bump uh, when I'm working on bumps I usually want to add to be able to control how much of the bumps how much detail I want in the bump uh, so let me first add uh, first reset this and instead of using this scar ramp if if you add a math operator with the operation of power you can control how detailed your bumps are by using this node group here, this value here. So you can add that in, but I don't think it's affecting doing much here. So I'll just remove it. So you can, any control you can think of, you can add it in and uh, see how that goes. Let me fix this because it's not looking too well. I'm just going to reduce the amount here. And uh, that's what we have. Yeah, so that's it. Again, I'm uh, going to be breaking this up to different videos uh, if you want to watch. Uh, and uh, if it's just for to make it easy to find other different parts. Thanks for watching.